Hello everybody, welcome back down into the dungeon for the Sunday look at basically everything that's going on down here. Uh, for the record, it is like Sunday the 18th of March, and uh, I still have 10 weeks to go. Still not quite used to having the kitten at my feet down here, that's going to take me a while to adjust to. Anyway, I've still got like 10 weeks to go until I can start gardening outside, but I am beginning to feel the the hint of crunch time coming towards me. I think uh, next week I'm going to get started on my barasca type things. I've got a lot of kale around obviously but I uh, haven't got any cabbage up yet, no cauliflower, no blo no broccoli, no broccoli. So uh, I'd like to get those started and as I understand those need to be started eight to ten weeks before they go outside so time to get on that one. And then I guess after that it's going to be melons. I got a lot of watermelons and musk melons and honeydews and type things that I'd like to get growing this year too. Didn't have a lot of success with them last year. But, you know, you learn from your mistakes, you move forward, right? So, on that note, one of the things that has repeatedly been a huge mistake for me is attempting to root peppers. Let's take a look at that purple bin, see how things are going there. Obviously, there's no roots started down there yet. It's only been a day or two. But what I really want to check on is, are the stems moist? Um, are the leaves falling off? Just basic things like that. So, yeah, we'll start there. We'll work in a circle. Go check out the big light. Yeah, let's get going. So I think I'm going to turn the funky LED off for a moment here while we look at these show them in their actual color. Everything seems to be still a fairly happy shade of green so that's promising. Looking at the stem definitely got some moisture on it which is good because some of these I was a little worried about the placement trying to group them more towards the lit area and, and some of them weren't necessarily looking like they were going to get any of the spray but it looks like everything I've checked is definitely damp excellent so they're not soaking in anything I still haven't used any kind of rooting gel or powder or anything like that didn't even dip them in honey although I need to talk to shocks about which honey I'm allowed to use for that she's got some fermentation things going on upstairs and I know some of it is well already spoken for but yeah so far these are coming along nicely and there's no really nasty funky smell so I'm very excited about that. The plant that I took them from seems to be doing better now that it's uh, supporting less overall plant matter and currently has a hard working ladybug visitor so that's encouraging to me because I can't really pick this one up and shake it over the fish tank. It's little accompaniment is doing just fine down there. Got another monster mint here. This is the one that was growing with the Nepalese bell. Got a little abused and like I said I was going to do I just basically dumped it in mud from that compost bin but seems pretty happy. Well, now you like mint? That's not the right kind of mint for you dude. Over here looking at the Nepalese bell in the fabric pot I was uh, advised to keep an eye out for mold and mildew but uh, I found a fan buried in all my stuff down here. Um, which is to say I remembered I have it. <laughs> so I'm going to get that plugged in over the next couple of days and set it going around, make sure I've got some better air circulation going on. That little tiny mint down with the Sugar Rush Red seems to be doing okay. The Sugar Rush though, I don't know. There's a reason I planted more seeds. The Yellow Scorpion back here still doesn't have a lot going on as far as new growth. Aside from its mint, it's doing just fine. And then we've got, this is the remains of the sand dollar. And there may be a little tiny something coming up there. So I'm going to leave it for another week or two, see what develops. But mm, I fear we may be saying goodbye to this lovely plant. Very glad that I've gotten so many of those uh, accidentally dropped seeds to sprout. These spider plants back here are doing great, although they've got that same kind of funky spotting going on. It must just be because it was so dusty last time I sprayed. The oregano down there is clearly very happy. So that's good. Everything there is looking alright. Fed the fish before I started this clip so hopefully they won't scatter at the sound or the sight of the camera. They're clearly doing alright. Pretty sure they've at least doubled in size since they've gotten here. Thinking next time we go down to Brandon, might just pick up a couple more. 
beef up the numbers in there need to get more nutrients because there are more and more plants constantly being stuffed into this thing I haven't put the uh, Swiss chard that I want to transplant in the back corner there yet but taking a look at that little kale I stuffed in there yesterday it's doing okay well the tomato seems to be doing okay some of these I didn't put humidomes on and they are clearly not doing okay that one just got a dome this morning I think it was too late same deal for this one over here may already be too late that's the joy of numbers though I have plenty of kale plants don't need to worry about it too much shoved one of the mints right up against the side here it was growing up well, around here ish <laughs> earlier but I needed to make room for more kale cups right so what do you do those green onions that I put into this Euro grower now aquaponic garden clearly doing quite well cut them down quite a few times as you can see and they're growing back for me just fine my little sage in a cup there is doing great another one of those dark opal basils some more kale down in the corner how's that ahi penic looking good and it also has a hard-working ladybug visitor so that's wonderful keep those aphids in control especially when I can't shake them off there's random tomatoes everywhere some more kale up here I desperately need to start transplanting those leeks and doing something with the dill looks like our basil is finally growing here and these couple of acorn squash seedlings starting to look like proper little squash plants 10 weeks to go wait it out you'll be fine and yeah, more kale here. Lots more kale. All the leftovers of the tomato varieties. So pleased by how many tomatoes I have started this year. Which is just so funny to me because I used to just hate tomatoes. It's all about the ones you're eating though. And when you're growing your own, you've got more choice. So as you saw yesterday, really not a lot going on on the seedling table. Apparently I didn't put in enough water. I've got a few of these pucks that haven't even finished swelling up yet, so I'll have to deal with that a little bit later on. Remember to slap a date on the top of the dome for this 72 cell. Obviously nothing popping up there yet. Quite a few tomato varieties that still need to be spread out. But I've made a little bit of room around, so I, I've got some space for them now. If you can kind of see on the shelf here, things have changed there. Um, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? Get away from the plants, get away from the plants. I need to make a fence. Look what he just did, right in front of me. Ate the tip right off that deaf leaf. You know, those things are poisonous. They're not good for you. Do you need to go upstairs? Stay away from the plants. Basement is a privilege, not a right. Anyway, scanning up over my mess here. This shelf was covered with tomatoes, but they had all grown to a point where they were up and touching the lights. And while these lights don't get really hot, I'm thinking I've got a lot of short plants that I'd like to see grow like that. So I did a bit of a switch. Got a lot of the new peppers in here. Those uh, garden salsas still have their domes on them and uh, a few of the sand dollars over here. Some kale, what a surprise. Got one of the sugar rush creams here. Very excited about those. Those look like they're a really productive pepper. So if I can get some of that going on here, that would be fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So yeah, I'm really hoping that these are gonna grow nice and strong underneath these lights. Ha, huh, funny story. I tried to reorder these lights, paid for it with my Amazon gift card from Swagbucks there, and then went to check on tracking, and it's unavailable. Amazon won't give me my money back, so. I have to make a few phone calls there. So looking here in the previously safe zone, but now the cat's allowed down here, so that kind of changes things. Rosemary seems pretty content. It's only been a couple of days that it's been in its new fabric planter, but it seems pretty happy. All the other plants I've got stuffed into the tray here with it, looking good. I still haven't sprayed them off yet, so they're dotted, but definitely doing quite well. Yes, everybody knows you're here, dude. Little spider plants starting to do offshoots. So that'll be great, more of those. Never have too many spider plants. They're good air purifiers from everything I've read. And coffee back there is doing all right. So not bad. Running out under two of the three lights right now. Rev gave me a good suggestion as to what might be wrong with this third one. So I'll perhaps be taking it apart and taking a look at it. I'm really good at taking things apart, but 
struggle with putting them back together, you know? So anyway, we'll scan up. I found all my little paper pots for things you just, uh, well, you don't really want to disturb the roots on when you transplant. So I think that'll be good for melons and cucumbers and things like that. I'd like to get an early start on my cucumbers. Up above that, under the three clippy lights, you can see a few of the tomatoes that got moved over. Seem to be doing well. We've got a Manitoba, Better Boy, Red Pear, Broad Ripple Yellow. I think this might be another Manitoba. No, that's a beefsteak. Bush beefsteak. So yeah, it's a very good start for tomatoes this year. I'm, I'm very excited about that. The red demon pepper in the back is looking all right. And this crimson red has been hacked back with those little scissors. Trying to cut off any buds when I see them. Some nice looking peppers on this cookie sheet here. I still haven't transferred them out of these water bottle bottoms, but it actually helps them kind of fit on the tray. So we'll leave it that way for now. Leave well enough alone as it were. Definitely need to transplant some more of those charred in the back. Yet another ladybug, still hard at work for me. Excellent. Clean up that ahi, that would be great. Grab a Siberian home here. Seems to be a nice productive pepper. I mean, again, trying to keep up with nipping those buds off is a bit of a pain. I don't see any ladybugs on it today, though, so I can give it a good shake over the fish tank when we're done here. Dude, get off the shelf. Gordon. I'll get the sprayer. Get off the shelf. Dude. Three, two, one. And that's why I call it weaponized water. All right, well, we were at the top shelf here, spinning full circle. We get under this funky light. Let's see about turning it off. Well, that changes things a little bit. All right, so under here, we can see the rest of the tomatoes. They had just gotten too tall for that little shelf. I mean, clearly that light is doing its job, which is really not bad for the price I paid for it, but I <laughs> would like to have gotten the other one that I ordered. There's that pitcher plant. It's kind of doing all right, kind of not. It's really hard for me to tell. It's, it's not dead yet, so I'm just gonna run with that being a positive. Cat mint in the back. Not looking great. Could use a transplanting. It's just sitting in a folders can with no drainage at all. We know how I do with things with no drainage. That coffee tree back there is doing all right. The lemon is bushing out surprisingly well. That might be a good option for uh, one of the fabric pots. Because they're originally for trees anyway, weren't they? We've got the sage back there looking very nice. It's living mint from the store. This thing has just gone insane. And every other mint you see around is a descendant from this one. Take one of the little runners out, clip it back. I like to wait until they've got roots on them. That way I can bury them with roots. But it doesn't matter. Mint will pretty much propagate and grow roots on its own. More kale around, what a surprise. It's kind of weird looking at these things without their, their usual light. It's nowhere near as bright. Can't quite see. Ahi calabaza. A lot of these, you know, I'm still waiting for roots to come out of the bottom. And uh, then I'll definitely put them into the same setup as this Folgers can here. Still got my little pepper pot on there and it's gotten a fair bit bigger. So I'm pretty excited about that. This uh, party cup and reservoir seems to be doing great. I'm not sure why it didn't work for me before, but sure working this year, so that is fantastic. Another one of the Grandpa's Siberian home, and oh, this one's got a couple of ladybugs working it on there. That's excellent. So yeah, as you can see, I mean, things are coming along fairly well, for me, anyway. Um, you know, it's not a massive garden setup, but it is a start. And uh, while I am working on setting up for uh, my 2018 outdoor gardening season, I'm also focusing primarily on setting up the dungeon garden. I want one of each of the different varieties of peppers that I have growing to stay in here. It will never go outside, it will never see the sun, and grow entirely under artificial light so that hopefully I can keep them and clone them for future plants because I want those genetics to remain true. So. Yes, it's a little garden comparatively, like I could have used this space a lot better and in future years I undoubtedly will really maximize my space down here. But for now, I think um, this, is, this is doing alright for a, 
unfinished basement in Manitoba in March. Not bad, not bad. I'm pretty happy with what I've got going here. So, uh, as always, you know, I thank you guys so much for sticking around and checking out these now daily videos, except for Mondays, because Monday's a me day, so there won't be anything tomorrow. Uh, and in particular, sticking around and giving me the advice over the years on uh, how to better go about my gardening adventures, we'll call them, because that's a polite way to call what happens in my garden. Yes, it's an adventure. So, yeah, that's about it. Uh, pretty much everything going on down here I've uh, given you a look at so I will see you guys on Tuesday have a fantastic couple of days everybody